Hello and welcome to Mathletes once again to Mathlete Minds. As we come to the conclusion of the topic of pair of linear equations and its applications, it's time once again to get back to conditions of consistency and inconsistency of a pair of linear equations. Now, in the first video of the same, we had understood with the help of graphs what are these conditions and how the graphs justify the conditions. Now, what is consistency? Consistency means you have solution, and inconsistency means the uh, there is no solution for those particular uh, equations. Now, under the category of consistency, we have two conditions. One condition where all the ratios, that is A1 by A2, is equal to B1 by B2, is equal to C1 by C2. Here we find that the lines completely coincide with each other. They have infinite solutions. And the second condition is A1 by A2 is not equal to B1 by B2. So here the lines intersect exactly at one point, they have a unique solution. So these two are two cases of consistency. And the third case that we have here is A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2 is not equal to C1 by C2. And this is a condition where we get parallel lines. So here A1 by A2, B1 by B2, C1 by C2, they are all, this is the A1 by A2 is the coefficient of X, B1 by B2 is the coefficient of Y and C1 and C2, they are the constants over here. So that we must need uh, keep in mind. So now let us see what are the different type of questions that arise. The first one of course is a very simple one. The question is determine the value of k for which the given system of equation has an unique solution. So the first and foremost thing that we need to do over here is rewrite these equations in the standard form of the equations. Uh, so this is equal to minus 1 is equal to 0. And this becomes 5x minus 7y minus 5 is equal to 0. This will help us in avoiding all uh, errors related to signs. So now the first condition that we need to apply over here is 2 by 5 is equal to k by, uh, not equal to minus k by, oh sorry, k by minus 7. So this becomes, this implies that k is not equal to minus 14 by 5. So we will get a unique solution for all values of k excepting for k as equal to minus 14 by 5. So this is the solution for this. And you need to write the answer in this format. And the standard format of course is ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. We will be expressing all the equations in this term before solving them. Moving on to the next question, we have ax plus by is equal to c. So, this will be rewritten as ax plus by minus c is equal to 0 and this is lx plus my minus n is equal to 0. So, the condition is a by l is not equal to b by m. So, on cross multiplication we get am is not equal to bm. So, this is the condition for a unique solution in this particular case. Moving on to the next one, determine the value of k for which the given system of equations has no solution. So, no solution uh, means that we have to get parallel lines over here. So, we will apply the condition for parallel lines. So, first 4x plus 6y minus 11 is equal to 0 and 2x plus ky minus 7 is equal to 0. So, if we apply the condition, we get here 4 by 2 is equal to 6 by k is not equal to minus 11 by minus 7. Minus minus can be cancelled out. So from the first two ratios we will get here 4k is equal to 12 which implies k is equal to 3. So the value of k is 3. Now we can check this value of k as 3. If I put it in this over here I will get here 2 uh, and here if I put of course here we cannot put on this right hand side is 11 by 7. So, this 3 is not equal to 11 by 7. So, k is equal to 3 is the justified answer. So, sometimes you need to check the conditions also where, uh, where you, we have found the value of k that is justifying this condition or not. Next one is determine the value of k for which the given system of equations has no solution. So, here uh, it is no solution again. So, x plus 2y minus 5 is equal to 0 and 3x plus ky minus 15 is equal to 0. This is slightly different. Here if I apply this condition I will get 1 by 3 is equal to 2 by k 
is not equal to minus 5 by minus 50. So minus minus gets cancelled. So if I take the first two proportions from here, I'll get k is equal to 6. From these two, I'll get here 2 by k is not equal to 1 by 3. That means k is not equal to 6. So here you notice that one proportion gives us k is not equal to 6, one proportion gives k is equal to 6. That means both the values are contradicting each other. Hence, there is no particular value of k for which this particular set of equations or system of equations has no solution. Then we have determined the value of k for which the given system of equations has no solution. Now, we will rewrite this equation as kx plus 3y minus, put this k minus 3 inside the parenthesis so that we avoid all sign mistakes. 12x plus ky minus 6 is equal to 0. So, no solution again, k by 12 is equal to 3 by k is not equal to minus of k minus 3 by minus 6. Now, these two minus signs can be eliminated. So, from the first part, we get here k squared is equal to 36. That means k is equal to plus minus 6 both. Now, there are two answers over here for k. So, we need to check out whether it is plus 6 or minus 6 or both. So, we have to check it by uh, applying it over here and checking whether it justifies this condition or not. Now, if I take plus 6, so the first term over here becomes half, the second term becomes half and the third term also 6 minus 3 by 6 that is also half. So, k is equal to plus 6 is equating all of them. But here the condition is this should not be equal. So, if I take minus 6, I will get here the first part will be minus half. The second part will be again minus half. And the third part over here will be minus 6 minus 3 that is not equal to this will be minus 9 by 6 and that is equal to minus 3 by 2. So, we get come to the conclusion that k is equal to minus 6 is the only solution over here. So that we have no solution for this particular set of equation. k is equal to 6 cannot be taken as the answer because here all the ratios, it does not justify this condition. The condition has to be justified. The next question is, uh, the system of equations has no solution. Now this is already written in the format of the standard form. So we just write take the ratios 3k plus 1 by k squared plus 1 is equal to 3 by k minus 2 is equal to minus 2 by minus 5. Now, if we take the first set of uh, uh, ratios over here and cross multiply, we get 3k plus 1 into k minus 2 is equal to 3 into k square plus 1. No solution, sorry. So, this will be unequal. So, this will become 3k square minus 6k plus k minus 2 is equal to 3k square plus 3. 3k square and 3k square gets cancelled. We are left with minus 5k is equal to 5. That means k is equal to minus 1. Now, we get only one solution. Let us see whether it justifies this portion or not. So, if I put here in the second ratio, I will get here 3 by minus 1 minus 2 that is minus 3 that is minus 1. And this is already 2 by 5. So, minus 1 is not equal to 2 by 5 and k is minus 1 is that particular value of k which will give us no solution. Next one is determine the value of k for which the given system of equations has infinite solutions. So here we take up k plus 1 into x plus 9y minus take the help of parenthesis again there are two terms is equal to 0. Then we have x plus k plus 1 y minus 4 is equal to 0. So, here the condition is all the ratios must be equal. So, we get here k plus 1 by 1 is equal to 9 by k plus 1 is equal to is equal to minus of 5 k plus 2 by minus of 4. So, this gets cancelled. Now, cross multiplying the first two, we will get here k plus 1, the whole square is equal to 9. 
So if we simplify this, we'll get here k plus 9 is equal to plus minus 3. Now if we take the positive value plus 3, then in that case k is equal to 2. If we take the negative value minus 3, in that case k is equal to minus 4. So we get here two solutions. Now we have to check up whether both the solutions justify or whether only one solution justifies. So we take this uh, two, uh, the k okay value as 2. Uh, if I put it in the first part, I get here 2 plus 1, that is 3. The second one will be 9 by 3, that is again 3. So the second one is also 3. The third one, uh, 5 into 2, that is 10 plus 2, 12 by 4, that is also 3. So uh, this 2 is justifying all the 3 ratios and they are all equal. Now if I take minus 4, let us check out for minus 4 also. If I put here minus 4, I will get here minus 3. The first one will become minus 3. If I put here minus 4, 9 by minus 3, that gives us again this is minus 3. If I take it, put it over here, I will get here 5 into minus 4, that is minus 20 plus 2. Minus 20 plus 2, that gives us minus 18 by 4. So minus 18 by 4, that is, uh, this is not equal to 3. Minus of 3, we are getting is minus 18 by 4. 2 2 is 4, 2 9 is 18. 9 by 2. So that means, k is minus 4, does not justify this condition. Hence, k is equal to 2. This is the only solution to get infinite solutions for this set of equations. Next one is determine the value of k for which the given system of equations has infinite solution. So again kx plus 3y minus k minus 3 is equal to 0. And 12x plus ky minus k is equal to 0. So if we take the ratios we get here k by 12 is equal to 3 by k is equal to minus of k minus 3 by minus k. So minus and minus gets cancelled. From the first two set uh, proportion we get here, k square is equal to 36. So k is equal to plus minus 6 both. And from the second two part or from the first and third part, if we equate this, we get here 3 by k is equal to k minus 3 by k. So we get here 3k is equal to k square minus 3k. So we get here k square minus 3k, k square minus 3k and minus 3k that is equal to 0 which implies k square minus 6k is equal to 0. So k and k minus 6 are the two solutions. So k is equal to 0 and k is equal to 6. So the common solution that we are getting is plus 6. Hence the only value of k which will justify this condition is 6. You can check it out also. 6 by 12 is half. 3 by 6 is half. 6 minus 3, that is 3 by 6, again it is half. 0 is not going to be taken as answer here. And minus 6 is not going to justify this condition. So the only value of k which will justify the answer is k is equal to 6. Now here we are getting uh, 3 by k. Here you must keep in mind this uh, you can uh, you need to cross multiply this and get a quadratic once you get a quadratic this way you get two solutions and both the solutions must be shown zero is not acceptable because then automatically this will reduce to zero this will become undefined and so on this will also become undefined now let's take the next question determine the values of a and b for which the given system of equations has infinite solutions so for infinite solutions, let us first put it in the format plus a plus b into y minus a plus b minus 2 is equal to 0. And x plus 2y minus 1 is equal to 0. So we get here a minus b by 1 is equal to a plus b by 2 is equal to minus of a plus b minus 2 by minus 1. Minus minus gets cancelled. Now from these two we get here 2a minus 2b is equal to a plus b. So from here we get a is equal to 3b. This is the first value. Now if we you can take the first and third or second and third and uh, find out the 
another equation over here. So I'm taking the first and the third. That will make my work more easy. So A minus B is equal to A plus B minus 2. A, A gets cancelled. We are getting here minus 2B is minus 2. So B is equal to 1. So A of course which is 3B will be equal to 3 into 1 that is 3. So A is 3 and B is 1. These are the two values for which the system of equations will have infinite solution. Moving on to the next one, determine the value of lambda for which the given system of equations has lambda x plus y is equal to lambda squared, x plus lambda y is equal to 1, has infinite solutions, no solution and a unique solution. So all the three cases have to be discussed over here. Now let us start with infinite solutions. For infinite solution, all the three ratios are equal. So if I rewrite this equation lambda x, lambda x plus y minus lambda square is equal to 0, the first equation. The second equation is x plus lambda y minus 1 is equal to 0. So if we take the first condition, we will get here lambda y1 is equal to 1 by lambda is equal to minus lambda square by minus 1. So this gets cancelled. Now from the first two part, we get lambda square is equal to 1. And uh, this gives us lambda is equal to plus minus 1. And from the second and third part, we get over here lambda q is equal to uh, is equal to 1. Now, if you are under, uh, take this value, lambda q is equal to 1, this is possible only if uh, lambda is 1. So, lambda q is 1, that means lambda should be plus 1. So, that this condition is justified. So, in order to get this condition justified, we have to take lambda is equal to plus 1. Minus 1 has to be ignored, which we get from the first part. The only solution for infinite uh, solutions is lambda is equal to plus 1. Now, taking no solution, for no solution we have, we will get here lambda by 1 is equal to 1 by lambda is not equal to lambda square by 1. I have removed the minus sign. So, again we get here lambda square is equal to 1 and so from here we get lambda is equal to plus minus 1. Now if we take here uh, the second condition that we have here is 1 by lambda should not be equal to lambda square by 1. So if you analyze it properly, if I put here 1, then I will get the left hand side as 1, the right hand side will also be 1. So that means it will not justify this condition if I take positive 1. If I take negative 1 for lambda, I will get the left hand side as minus 1. 1 by minus 1 is minus 1. And this will become lambda square that is minus 1 the whole square that is positive. So we have to take in this case for no solution, we have to take lambda value as minus 1. Then we come to unique solution. For unique solution, a1 by a2 should not be equal to b1 by b2. So if I take lambda by 1, the third condition over here, should not be equal to 1 by lambda. That means this implies that lambda square should not be equal to 1. So lambda should not be equal to plus minus 1. So for unique solution, uh, we should not get lambda as plus minus 1. Excluding plus minus 1, all other values will give us unique solution. And for uh, the second case, which was no solution, Lambda should not be equal to minus 1. This is for no solution. And this is for infinite solution. If we have to get an infinite solution, lambda should be equal to plus 1. So this is how we tackle these type of questions. Hope you like the explanation. Kindly like, share and subscribe to the channel. And next we will be continuing with the next topic of class 10. So thank you for watching.